In Matthew 24, verse 44, Jesus said, Be ready, for he is coming at an hour when we do not expect him. What does it mean to be ready practically? You're about to find out, so don't move. A thousand years before there was a Protestant, there were Sunday laws that originated in pagan sun worship. For centuries, the church ruled the world until the Protestant Reformation. Men like Martin Luther championed personal and religious freedom. Thousands fled to America to seek freedom from religious tyranny. Will Protestants and freedom-loving Americans fight to keep freedom alive, or will we descend into a modern dark age? The Sunday Law Crisis, what you need to know. Episode 3, Getting Ready Practically. Welcome to part three of the Sunday Law Crisis, What You Need to Know. I have in my hand a book called Fox's Book of Martyrs. It is a Christian Protestant classic dealing with the uh, sufferings of God's people in history. The word Protestant means protest. On page 43 of this book, it says, disregarding the maxims and principles of the gospel, the papal church, arming herself with the power of the sword, persecuted the church of God and wasted it for several centuries, a period most appropriately termed in history, the Dark Ages. The kings of the earth gave their power and their strength to the beast. It is a fact of history that for approximately 400 years from the 1500s to the 1800s, the vast majority of Protestant scholars and preachers and, and la laity like Martin Luther and John Calvin, Huss, Jerome, Wesley, uh, Charles Spurgeon, and many others, they believed that the beast of the book of Revelation was a symbol of the Roman church. And we believe the same thing today. I also have a copy of the large official catechism of the Roman church, catechism of the Catholic church. On page 538, 528, it's, it talks about sanctifying Sunday. And it says that public authorities should ensure citizens a time intended for rest and divine worship. Christians should seek recognition of Sundays as legal holidays. So it's no secret that the Roman church strongly believes in Sunday. They believe that Sunday should be legislated by law. Uh, as we shared in the past, past programs, the Roman church also claims that they change the Bible Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath into Sunday, and that it is a mark of their authority and one of these days, this mark of Rome's authority, Sunday, is going to be legislated in the United States and around the world. And that's what Bible prophecy predicts. We have a little book also on this topic called Decoding the Mark of the Beast. In the first program, we talked about Revelation 13 and explained this in greater detail. The second program was called Getting Ready Spiritually, and now it's time for the third program called Getting Ready Practically, and I'm here again with uh, Dean Corridan. Dean, <laughs> good, to, see you, good to have you here. He is the conference president of the Iowa Missouri Conference of Seventh day Adventists. And Dean is a spiritual man, a godly man, a student of the Bible. And I thank you for being part of another program with me. We're going to go real just practical today. We, we don't want to just believe in theory and just go through history, but we want to talk about what does this mean in my life as I get ready for Earth's final crisis. Well, thanks for inviting me to be here. You're welcome. And uh, I think we ought to use the Bible as the basis for, we used it for a basis of spiritual preparation. Yes. And now we should use it for a basis of practical Definitely. Uh, preparation. I'm all for that. So we let's want to be people of the book. That's right. So, Steve, let's just start back in Matthew chapter 24. Okay. And uh, let's look at the starting with verse 36. Now, this is the chapter where Jesus tells the disciples things that they should look for that would be indications of the end of the world and the shortness of time. Right. So Jesus, still speaking, says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Then get this verse. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So Jesus himself refers to something in history as a reminder to us at the end of the world of what a preparation would look like. Then he refers to society. He says, For as in the days before the flood, 
They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all the way. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. So there's a, a clear parallel between Noah's day and the last days. And, and these verses that you just read actually are right before verse 44 that I read earlier where Jesus said, be ready. That's so right. So he says, be ready. And he talks then about previously about Noah, and we're, we're going to learn some practical lessons, aren't we? We are. From Noah's life. So I think the principle that we need to build on today is that when we look at se where it says they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, we shouldn't be interpreting that, that it was wrong to get married. Okay, right. I'm, I'm glad because uh, That's I'm a happily right. married man and so are you. <laughs> The problem that's being indicated here is that they were living their daily lives with no regard that things were about to right. change. For God and His warning. That's right. So the practical, what we're going to build on is living life today that's reflective of belief yes. that Jesus is going to come. That, perfect. Very good. Now, one of the places to go for that would be Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is a great by faith chapter in the Bible. And I think one of the points that we have to keep in mind when we talk about practical living, it would be well to keep the words in front of it by faith. Whatever we're doing is by faith, but it's going to come out in a practical way. Right, that's, a great, that's a great point. Yeah. When you really look at the text, it says by faith, by faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, which we've been warned about in the book of Revelation. We've been studying Revelation 13. We've been divinely warned about what is coming. And, and then it says, he, he moved with godly fear, I have the New King James Bible, and he prepared an ark for the saving of his household. So there's a, he's, he's living by faith. God warned him. He moved and he prepared. So the principles that we're going to build on then in practical living is Noah had never seen a flood. So he's preparing for something he has never seen before. None of us have ever seen an end of a world. That's right. None of us have ever seen a second coming. But Noah believed that so much that he built an ark. That's a physical activity that he did for 120 years. Mm -hmm. Now, there's practical application that comes out of that. Uh, I mean, if you actually build the ark, I mean, that costs something. That's right. I was thinking about that, that did, did Noah employ workers to help him build the boat? And if he did employ them, he, he would have to have paid them. Did he have some property that he had to sell to get some extra money to pay his employees? Uh, th there's a whole host of things we really don't exactly know, but I'm sure that that there were some real practical steps that Noah made to put everything on the altar, to invest his time, his money, his energy into building that boat, which was doing God's work. Yeah, so you just have to figure, how would Noah make a decision? How would Noah make a decision of possessions or assets that I have today? I think that Noah would have said, look, a flood is coming. I'm building this boat, this ark. We're going to get on it. Am I going to be able to bring that on it? And if the answer is no, then he would use that to build the boat, right. to build the ark. That would make sense to me in a practical sense that we begin to think in a journey from here that according to the Bible will pass through a crisis, a time of trouble. The Bible says as such has never been seen before that will end us in a new kingdom, an everlasting kingdom that there will be a journey that we will make in an evaluation to say, what is it that I will take into the new kingdom? The Bible indicates that we're only going to take yourself, your own character, and people around you. There's no indication that a car is going into the new kingdom. Right. Yeah, or no a house, or, or a boat. Or house, boat, bank accounts. Mutual funds. No indication. Retirement accounts. That's right. So that should begin to adjust the way I live. Now, there's uh, principles in the Bible that could help us with that adjustment. So, for instance, the Bible cautions us about debt. It cautions right. us not to go into debt. Right. 
In fact, it says if we're out of, if we're in debt, we should not rest until we're out of debt. Right, here's the text, Romans 13, 8 says, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Love is fulfilling the law, and God wants us out of debt as much as possible. So a practical then, according to the Word of God and the principle we're working on, a practical way to approach a coming crisis would be, how am I going to deal with my money? What's going to happen to my finances? Well, number one, the Bible says don't be in debt. Don't owe anybody. Uh, another principle would be that you and I were talking about this a while ago, that uh, we should be content with food and raiment that we have. Right. There should be a spirit of contentedness in us. Right. We read that. I read that in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I just read that, and that's so practical. Practical, it says, Godliness with contentment is great, is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, we should be content. Now, that's a huge principle, because right now we're living in a society where nobody's content with anything. Yeah, everyone wants to keep up with the proverbial Joneses. That's right, and even in the raising satisfied. of our children, we can see a spirit of no matter how much there is, there's still a discontentedness. Good practical daily living would be to learn contentment, to find contentment with what we have, mm -hmm. and to pass that along to our children. Mm -hmm. The best way to do that for parents is service. If we help our young people, our children today, to find joy in doing things for others, start with grandma and grandpa, mm -hmm. start with family, helping mom and dad, but neighbors, even to the people they don't know, involve them in projects to help other people find a sense of joy, they will have a contentment with the things Practical that they have. Practical service. Yeah, I think too many, I'm, I'm fearful that too many, too many of us, and when you know, kids grow up, people save for college, send their kids into college, they come out with a big debt, huge debt, and the goal is to get a good job, make money, have the American dream, be content, have a nice car, have money in the bank, the nest egg, and everything really, it's so easy for that just to become a selfish pursuit. And if we really believe, as Noah believed, that prophecies are being fulfilled in front of us and that time is running out and that the crisis is coming, the mark of the beast is coming, and then when that time comes, everybody will make their final decision. The doors of heaven will close just like Noah's Ark closed. Uh, just like there were seven days after the closing of the door of the ark until the flood came, there will be seven plagues in the book of Revelation that will come on those that get the mark, the time of trouble. And God is preparing us to go through that time. And at the end of that time is the second coming of Jesus. If we really believe that, then what should be our, our goal? It's not just to have a big house and have a big car and have a lot of money in the bank so we can have a nest egg. Our goal should be, like Noah, uh, moving and preparing so that our families and ourselves can be saved as we live practically by faith. Well, one of the principles that God gives us in the Bible, in the Word of God, is the principle of tithing. And God gives that in Malachi to bring all the tithes and offerings into a storehouse. Is it because somebody needs the money? Well, they may, but God says bring it in so that you will see that I'm going to bless you That's right. and care for you and keep you. So a practical way that in our family we have found to help even our children prepare for a coming crisis is to teach the principle of tithing. So our 10%. 10%. So our kids understand that God can work for them and move for them and cause their money that's left to be enough for them to cover what they need. So I would encourage families that are listening to us talk today to, if there's ministries that they would like to support or help, or if they're appreciating the ministry that they're hearing right now of the ministry you have, is to consider donating and helping those ministries. If they're attending a church, then help the local church to be a strong local church. And I think you brought some literature that you can show that could even be a witness. Yes, that's right. Uh, I've been convicted for a long time that I need to be frugal with my money and to get a hold of literature. Uh, and, and I put money into literature. We, I don't have a lot of money, but I, I buy tracks. Uh, I get tracks whenever I can get them. And here's a little track called The Signs of the Times, a love letter from Jesus. Here's uh, a glow track, When Freedom Dies. I give this out regularly dealing with Revelation. A little book called Steps to Christ, which I take in, in hotels, airports, hand these out 
Uh, we have flyers. The ministry has, White Horse Media has flyers called The Time is at Hand, which is a Bible study on Revelation 13. We have another one on the signs of the times called There Shall Be Signs. Uh, just a few days ago, I was at the Spokane Airport meeting for my, my big appointment with the TSA government representative trying to, to uh, I was fingerprinted and, and getting interviewed and filling out my form so I could be background checked to see if I can finally uh, go through the pre-check line all the time because I travel so much. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know if this person is open to a track or a little glow track or a little steps to Christ. Uh, and so I thought about it and then we struck up a conversation. The lady asked me what I did. I told her I was a pastor and she became very interested in, in uh, my church. And so we just talked some more and I reached into my satchel and handed her some literature and she was very interested in reading it. And I, I give out tracks on airplanes and different places. I imagine you, too, you do too. And so this is practical too. The, practical the Bible, living. The Bible says uh, in the book of Proverbs, he who wins souls is wise. Daniel 12, verse, I think it's verse 3, says uh, those who, who, who win many to righteousness will be like the stars forever and ever. And so this is a practical thing we can do is get a hold of tracks, give them away to people, talk to people when we can. If we, if we don't have the courage to go door to door or to hand them out everywhere we go, we can certainly, when you get a phone bill or an electric bill, stick a track in the bill and send it to someone. But to me, this is a practical way that we can be serving God. And as you mentioned, ministries like White Horse Media, uh, we, we survive on contributions. Now, I give my tithe to my local church and I give offerings to different ministries and people give offerings to us and this is how we, this is how we continue to function. And this is a time when we need to, to put our money where our mouth is, as they say, and put our money into the Lord's work because the time is coming when that money will be worthless. And when we can't buy or sell, unless we have the mark, we're not going to be able to even access, most likely, money that happens to be in our banks because if we don't go along with the mark, we can't access this money. So we need to be using this money uh, before that time comes or it's just going to be worthless. Well, it's interesting to me that we have the description of heaven found in Revelation 21 and 22. And uh, time is, is uh, heaven's portrayed with the city and, and all that it's there. But I, it came to me uh, a few weeks ago that in heaven, there's a couple things you're not going to be able to give. I mean, you're not going to be able to give an offering. We are walking on streets of gold. That's right. So if ever a person is going to use their monies to advance the kingdom of God, it's going to be this side of heaven. Something else that you're not going to be able to give in heaven is time. There comes a point where the Bible says that Jesus says time is no more. I mean, if you're living forever, what sacrifice of time are you going to make? If ever we're going to make a sacrifice of time to do something of service for Jesus, for somebody else, we're going to do that this side of heaven. So time, money, the Bible even indicates when it goes through Hebrews 11 that Abraham, his belief, it affected where he lived. So would our belief in the coming crisis or the kingdom of God affect the type of house that I would choose to live in? And where we live in. Where oh, I would right. live. My, our family moved out of California seven years ago out into North Idaho where we are now to have some land uh, it's cheaper out here, less expensive, and we especially wanted to get our children into the country. Uh, we now have a little garden. We, we try to grow uh, as much food as we can, and it's, it's very valuable. It's great for the kids to be in the country, a lot less temptations, and it's good for their spiritual lives. It's good for my wife and I. Uh, it's, it's a lot calmer, a lot quieter, and we have good food that's organic that we can grow. Uh, not that we're saved by, by food, but it's, it certainly is a blessing, and being in the country has, has helped me personally uh, to get closer to Jesus. So we, we certainly believe in, uh, in country living, that this is, this is a practical step as we get ready for Jesus' coming. We'll have another program at the end of this series called When to Head to the, when to head to the Hills, when the final time comes and the mark is enforced and we actually have to, uh, to leave uh, and go into the mountains and trust that God's going to take care of us just like he took care of the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness and gave them food and water. So we're not quite at that point yet, but it's coming and we know it. And we're, we're getting ready. 
we're getting ready to, to give everything. We are giving everything to God. You and know, we want when, to be ready. when people are listening to us speak, I, I know because I've been there, a person can begin to think, no, wait a minute. You've talked about our money. You've talked about where we live. You've talked about time. You've talked, you've talked about getting out of debt. And pretty soon a person can begin to feel like maybe it's too late for me. I'm so far in debt or, or this has gone wrong or that's gone wrong. I wouldn't want to end talking about practical things without the clear understanding that Noah's ark didn't save him, God saved him. That's right. He, and, and Noah didn't build it in a day. He didn't build it in a day. God has promised that if today we make decisions for him, he'll redeem our past. He'll help us overcome the things that have gone wrong. That's right. And if we purpose, for instance, to get out of debt, if we make it a subject to prayer, if we go to God and ask him to help us, he's promised he'll help us get That's out right. of debt. That's right. And, and Dean, it's, very, it's a very important principle. I heard a preacher once talk about this, that if God has 10 steps he wants us to take, the preacher said, and you're on step one. He said, what's the most important step God wants you to take? And the obvious answer is step two. That's and right. then it's step three. And so the things that we're talking about, we're doing a TV program, we're, we're covering a lot, of, a lot of ground, but God doesn't expect every change to be taken place, to take place overnight. God leads his people step by step, point by point to do different things. But, but if we are truly followers of Jesus, and if we're like Noah, and if we believe the warning, that the future is ahead of us and upon us. And if we believe Bible prophecy, it says that Noah moved and he prepared the ark. Hammer, blow by hammer, blow, nail by nail. And he made practical steps, I'm sure. And God is trying to, to move us. We talked about in the last program, spiritual preparation, but there's practical things that we need to be doing. Making things right with people that we've offended. Uh, having family worship in our homes, morning and evening worships, that's what our family does. Uh, there's a whole host of things. I used to be uh, a disco dancing, marijuana smoking, uh, cocaine snorting, lost Jew. And God got a hold of me 36 years ago and changed my life. Amen. And step by step, he's been changing me. I don't dress the way I used to dress on the dance floor. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that I don't do. I gave up my rock and roll. I had talked to a man just the other day named Gary just a couple days ago. He said, he said, I'm just about at the point, he was a preacher's kid, and he said, I'm just about at the point where God is going to get all of me. And he said, the last thing I'm doing right now is I've stopped watching my television programs that I love watching. And he said, you know, I, I, I don't miss it right now. The Lord is, is moving on me and he's getting me ready. So there's all kinds of things and God has to, to lead us step, step by step, but we need to, like Noah, we need to move and prepare and God will help us. You know, I think the most important point to draw off of this segment is that we can make a decision. We can say, wow, I just read in the Bible that there are some things that are going to happen before Jesus comes and I'm seeing those things happening and Jesus is coming soon. And our hearts can just be on fire and That's we right. can believe that. That's right. But I think if we don't back up our belief, by a practical daily living, we won't long believe. That's right. We'll fall back to sleep or we'll give up the belief. But God gives us the gift of practical everyday living to reinforce what we believe. That's right. There's a, there's a Bible verse that says, it's Proverbs, I think it's 418, that the path of the just is as the shining light, like the shining sun. It comes up and slowly goes. It comes up and it slowly goes down. And he says, uh, the scripture says, that the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter until the perfect day. And so God leads us on step by step. Uh, this morning I had a, a wonderful thing happen to me. My, my little boy, Seth, just this morning, he's 11 years old, he came over to me and he said, Dad, he, he was talking about baptism, about uh, possibly getting baptized soon. And, and he said, Dad, he said, uh, if, if Jesus were to come up to me, personally, like he came up to the rich young ruler and said, sell everything you have and give it to the poor and follow me, Seth said, Dad, I would do it. Wow. I would do it. And I tell you, it just, it just touched, my, touched me so much because I pray for my son every day. And I just have a strong conviction, as you do, that I need to live a practical Christian life. And uh, God has a lot of work to do in, in us. He's been working in me for a long time. I heard another preacher say, uh, God's not going to take us out of the oven half-baked. 
He's going to finish his work, as uh, Paul says, he'll finish, the, he'll finish the work he started in us. But it takes time. Uh, if you want to move out of the city into the country, God has to open those doors, and that takes time. And there, it takes time to raise children. It takes time to uh, sell property, to sell boats or sell things. It's a struggle to put everything on the altar. But this is where God is leading his people to get ready practically to make decisions to show the world that we really believe what the Bible says and we want to live that way as we get ready for a better land. You know, if the chapter of Hebrews was being written today and it was saying, by faith, and I think of this, if it said, by faith, Dean, mm -hmm. what would be the next sentence? And I think every listener should say that. Just go to Jesus and say, by faith, dear Jesus, what do you want me to do tomorrow? That's right. And, that, and that's really the most important thing, is what do you want me to do? It's the full surrender of the life, not 50%, uh, 80%, 95%, 99%, but totally. Uh, I used to have a student uh, when I used to teach high school kids, and we were talking about riding the fence. And this young 18-year-old uh, kid said to me, he said, Steve, you can't, Pastor Steve, you can't ride the fence. He said, because the devil owns the fence. <laughs> And I always, always remember that, that we've got to get off the fence and get on God's side totally and that people will see that we are real Christians trusting in Jesus. Um, I'd like to finish with a verse in the book of Revelation, chapter 15, verse 2. John said, I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark. They were standing on the sea of glass, they were, and they had the harps of God, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, and they said, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Those that get the victory over the mark of the beast during, during the final crisis, they have a relationship with Jesus and with God. They trust in God, and God does great things in their lives as he's getting them ready to stand during the final crisis. And that's our goal for you, is to help you to give your life to Jesus, to take all of this seriously, and to prepare for the coming of the Lord.